All right, so I'm back now, and I've already I've built the models. Uh, so here I have the Savage, and then I have the Raider. I have Zakar, and as I said in the unboxing, I went ahead and built the Gladiator to actually be a cannoneer. As you can tell, uh, the parts fit really nice. You know, they they all fit in, so it uh, made it for a really easy just adding the pieces I had. So that's that. Back banner for him is right here. Um, I'll probably apply that after I paint him. Um, <clears throat> so as you can tell, nobody's on bases yet. Uh, I'm in the midst of actually building their bases. I'm one of the people that uh, I paint the model, I paint the base, I kind of do it all as a separate piece. So for like Zakar, this will be his base. Um, just some uh, paper clay with some gravel, you know, to give it a little bit of texture to it to when it uh, it's finished. The For the Savages, I haven't uh, applied any of the gravel to the outside yet, uh, but that'll be next. And then, uh, of course, for the for him, for the uh, can now Cannoneer, I haven't put any of the paper clay at all on. Um, so that's the next step for, the, for him. Um, and then everything goes to priming and then painting. So that's the next step. All right, we're back with the, uh, you know, now that I've primed them, you know, primed them black. Uh, here's the base. Um, and then I base coated them. Um, I'm a dry brusher for the most part. So um, basically what I did was after priming them, I a base coat, just apply paint to 90% of the model, or at least with all the bits and pieces that you're going to painting a specific color. So for most of these guys, as you can see, um, they are uh, base coated in a sanguine, at sanguinean base um, from P3. Um, and then, like I said, I'm a dry brusher. So the next step would be to use another lighter shade and to dry brush it on. Um, dry brushing is uh, one of many painting techniques that can be used. Um, basically what it does is you take a dry, a, a brush is dry, of course. Uh, you don't dip it in water to get a point on or anything else. You put a little bit of the paint on it. So for the next shade, I'll be using the uh, Cotto Red Base. So, you do that, then you take what's, you know, you just dip the tip of the brush in there. Then you take your paper towel, you wipe off most of it, you know, so there's very little left on the brush. And then you know, what you do is you'll just kind of go really fast like this, well, like this, over all the pieces that you base coated the color, you coated them. And what's going to happen is the paint, because the way the brush works, or the way the brush should work anyways, it'll hit all the raised pieces, leaving a lot of the recessed areas, the, the, the original base color. Um, so, show you, you know, I told you the fundamentals. Now let's show you the, how it actually works. So you just put a little bit on the tip, wipe most of it off to where it doesn't seem to appear like there's any left. And then you dry brush like so. You will get a little messy with this. And the nice thing is, the stuff that you had wiped off on the on the uh, paper towel, you can go back and, and uh, re-pull back up. You know, until there's nothing really left over there. And you just keep on uh, working the dry brush. And you Dip in the pot when you need to. You get it everywhere. You get it, you know, anywhere and everywhere. Um, I like dry brushing because it uh, it gives a good effect. It helps you uh, speed up the paint painting process. Um, and I mean, it's not a bad. It doesn't give you. I mean, it's pretty decent. It 
gives you a nice effect. You, you can do any, as little as one color of, of dry brush over the base to as many as you feel necessary. Uh, typically, I like to do uh, two, two layers of dry brush, because um, I think it gives just enough over the, you know, over the base. So I think uh, looking them over, I got all his, all the good pieces with the armor. So oh, back of the leg, back of the leg. Gotta get the back of the leg. All right, so, all right, so I'm gonna put this off to the side real quick. But if you see, the Savage is base coated. He has one layer of dry brush. I mean, it's not that big of a difference, but it is enough of a difference to where, um, you know, it gives you some, some good, you know, difference in the colors. Now what I'll do, not on, not right now, because I want to do dry brushing on the rest of these guys, but I'll follow up the, the Cotter Red Base with the Cotter Red Highlight. It is a little orange, so I'll use less of it, because um, I, I still want to keep it as a red, a red tint, so I'll use less of it um, and do a lighter dry brush, which may sound weird. But I won't do as many strokes as what you saw me doing, you know, with all over the place. It'll just be, you know, just here and there. So that'll be that for this one. I'm going to dry brush the rest. And then I'll come back once everything has been dry brushed up. Well, dry brushed up to the final color. All right. So that's uh, pretty much the three, you know, using the colors that I needed to use um, on that. Clean the brush a little bit here. All right, so pretty much to get this effect, you, know, you see here, the, mainly it's the armor. Just worry about the armor portion because uh, usually when I dry brush, I tend to try to dry brush on the uh, the bigger portions that I'm going to use first. So for like these guys, it's going to be mainly their armor. Uh, same thing for Zakar, because um, he has a lot, quite a bit of armor. And then I'll come back through. I'll do the the fabric. Usually, I'm, I don't know how p other people paint. I like to paint from the largest surface down to the smallest one. So for like Zakar and you know most of them, it's going to be the armor first, and then probably the fabric um, then maybe probably the trim probably the weapon um, and then just kind of detailing it out from there and uh, the next part will be about uh, doing the fabric I don't do dry brushing for most of the fabric because if I tried dry brushing as you saw it's messy I mean I got it on my fingers um, if I try doing the dry brushing it will take the dry brush over to the armor and I don't want that so that's going to be a slightly different style of painting I guess more of a more typical painting um, so more on that when uh, we come back all right welcome back and uh, now it's for the fabric time for the fabric so with it being time for the fabric take our brush Go ahead and take the uh, the Raider because it seems like that's the one I've been starting with the most lately. Um, it kind of depends on you how you uh, how you see them. You know, if you see them, you know, in a one suit, one piece suit, a top, a bottom. However, you decide to paint it, um, you just basically just go and just like just like you would for base coating, just apply your paint to the fabric. And uh, just keep on going until you have all the fabric covered. Um, like I said, this is not going to be this. The fabric I never really do as a dry brush, unless it's you know the model is predominantly fabric, and then I'll do it dry brush. Um, but seeing as how my initial portion was 
the armor, which got dry brushed, there's no reason to, well, I guess there, there's a reason, but it'd be really sloppy. And I'd have to go do a lot of touch up on the armor for doing dry brush on the fabric. Um, I'm not exactly sure if, if, you know, the thing has a technique color or whatnot, a uh, technique name. Um, but basically what, you know, what's going to happen once I finish the base coat on all the fabric, I'm then going to go back over and do, um, you know, some highlighting to bring it up. Normally they'd probably tell you, oh, you do, uh, you got to do, uh, your base coat it should be your uh, the color you want it to be, and then you use a shading color, and then you use a highlight color, then you know maybe another shading color, then a highlight color, and then you finally highlight it uh, up to where you want it, and you know everything will look great from there. Um, I am one of those painters that I will do it from dark to light was never very good at doing the the shading portion uh, mostly because of the fact that I could never get it watered down just enough to to get it into all the all the you know cracks and crevices and not have it run all over the model um, I guess it makes me a non-professional painter um, but I do enjoy painting so getting the uh, getting the, the base coats down, you know, something about painting just, you know, helps relax. Helps relax me, makes me feel more at ease. And, uh, just making sure I just hit just the fabric portions, like I said. Um, once I get the, uh, this one done, I'll pause the camera, get all the rest of the fabric done, well, base coated anyways on the other two models and then we'll uh, pick up on the next shade um, one question that may be asked how do I how do I determine you know what colors do I use well once I figure out a color scheme that I want the, the model army to be uh, with this being my scorn I thought the uh, studio scheme was a pretty decent start. I liked the idea of having them be uh, predominantly red with the armor, but I wasn't too sold on the color, the the, the scorn colors for red. Um, which, if you're wondering, what do I, what do you mean by the scorn colors of red? Well, if you read through the forces of uh, the the forces book, um, in the ant back, they end up talking about. Uh, uh, you know the colors used for painting the studio color scheme and uh, I You know I was like okay well I could do that but I wasn't a big fan of their like I said I wasn't a big fan of their colors of red um, so I went ahead and uh, went to my other faction book which is uh, Kador and looked in that book and their red was a a red that I liked a little bit more. It was a little bit easier to be dingier, I guess. And then uh, I was, that's the, the colors I used. So in the back of the book, it talked about, you know, you have to use the Sanguinean base and the Cawdor base and the Cawdor highlight. And then you can, you know, it's supposed to be mix and blah, 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 blah. Um, so that's what I basically did for my scorn with those reds. But they talked about basing and and shadowing and highlighting and nah I that for me was dry brushing dry brushing you always know, start dark move to light unless you're doing like fire then you want to start light and go to dark but most people don't don't try to do you know don't dry brush too much of the fire it makes no sense all right so show you a little bit closer here you know you see where I, I just hit just the the main fabric on his body I did not hit the little uh, tabard pieces and the little you know loincloth or whatever it's going to be called. Um, I didn't get that, and I also did not get the fabric on the banner um, because the banner and the tabards are going to be the other color that I do 
for my, my scorn. Uh, my scorn, if you've ever seen it on videos, is predominantly red with blue. For this guy, he is fabric, his, uh, to make him stand out a little bit because he came from the battle box. And I'll pretty much mimic that with uh, Zakar when I start painting him. The armor will be red as normal. The fabric will be a white fabric. Um, basically, I, I use the same colors that uh, Minoth uses for Minoth white, which starts with a thornwood green, which is right there. And then I will do uh, blue for the tabards here. I will probably not do any blue on him. I'll probably just do white and that'll be it. So the beasts to kind of you know show that they were with the battle box with him will be uh, the base coat, the, I'm sorry, the fabric will be white, the tabards will be blue, and so will probably the back banners. But like I said, that's all to make it to where it'll all uh, kind of fit in with him. So I will be right back. I'm going to pause the camera while I base coat the other two. And then we'll go through, uh, take a little pause so the paint can dry, because that's the downside to uh, some of the base coating is it gets on kind of thick and you have to wait for it to dry a little bit. I don't do wet blending, so I, I would like to make sure it's, it's nice and dry. And uh, then we'll go to the next couple colors. So we'll be right back.